Hello, and thanks for joining me for Detour Part 4. Last week, I explored Matara and its surrounding environs before having some relaxing beach time. And today, I made the short trip to Kalania to check out its famous temple and visit with some potters who live in the area. To get there, I thought I would take the train from the Fort Railway Station. I've been on intercity trains before, but never a commuter one like this, and I was pleasantly surprised by how much space there was in the compartment. The open doors allow you to really check out the scenery, so I thought I would poke my head out to look around. After arriving at the Kalania station, I met up with the rest of the video team and made my way to the temple. This temple is believed to have been consecrated during the third and last visit of Buddha to Sri Lanka, which took place eight years after he gained enlightenment. The temple's original stupa is said to have sheltered a throne of gems on which the Buddha sat and preached. Before filming, we made sure to ask Venerable Mahinda Tero, the head monk of the temple, if we could film within the temple grounds, as the detour team is not in the business of offending anyone. I spent my time simply wandering around, taking in the uncommon beauty of the place. I was especially intrigued by the giant Korean-made metal bell within the sort of clock tower thing they had. I walked up to check it out and tried unsuccessfully to ring the bell with my hand. Now it was time to check out the temple itself, with its detailed carvings of Bahirawa sculptures and elephants on the outside. The Bahirawa were of special interest to me, as their fat tummies drooped down to the ground as they played at holding up the temple with their outstretched arms. Each one was different than the last, with detailed expressions. I also must mention the carvings of elephants and various other figures which were so intricate, lifelike, and beautiful. But I couldn't visit the Kalania temple without checking out its interior. Incredible carvings, pictures, and designs saturated the inside. The large reclining Buddha was a real highlight for me. I'd been to many Buddhist temples in my day, but never to one so elaborate and detailed as this, with its giant murals stretched across the walls depicting Buddhist mythology. Perhaps the most impressive artworks were the painting of the Prince Danta and Princess Hemamala, the woman who transported the Buddha's tooth in her hair before depositing it in candy and the mural depicting the transportation of the Bodhi tree to Sri Lanka on board a ship. After this, I was off to talk with the Venerable Mahindra Tero, who has been the head monk at the temple since 1992, the year I was born. He had a lot of interesting things to say. I was especially struck by his insistence that not much had changed at the temple since he became the head monk. Though society is rapidly changing, people are still coming to the temple and taking part in ancient traditions. He also mentioned that there is a famous rhyme in an ancient poem about the cleansing effects of the Kalania temple. At that time, it is good to be here and you can subdue that past karmic forces. Mm. So this is a belief, very peculiar belief that <laughs> we have in Sri Lankan people. So they usually come here. Mm -hmm and worship and they said that uh, at least you should visit this uh, temple at least one time in your life. Mm -hmm. so After chatting with Mahinda Tero, I was off to investigate a famous practice of the denizens of Kalania, pottery. I went to see some people who have been potters all their lives and whose ancestors did the same job as well. They were extremely courteous and, after showing me how to properly fashion various vessels out of clay using the pottery wheel, they allowed me to have a go. While many complain of having two left feet when it comes to dance, I can safely say that I have two left hands when it comes to pottery. Though I tried my best to imitate my teacher's skillful techniques, I could not make anything remotely pretty or useful. I either put too much water or too little, and my clay invariably got too sick or too chunky, effectively ruining all of my creations. My best work was a small pot which my teacher courteously kept and claimed she would fire and perhaps try to sell.
I washed my hands and hung my head in shame before my hosts showed me around the premises and explained the process of finishing a clay pot. First, they make the pot, and then they let it dry in the sun. After it is dried, they remove any imperfections before styling and polishing the clayware. After letting it dry in the sun again, the clay is put into the kiln where it shrinks, hardens, and changes from brown to red. I then had a short interview with the uncle using my excellent singola. And then it was off to cross the lovely Kalinia River by boat. I waited on the shore as my expert ferryman made his way across. I boarded the boat and looked out across the green expanses on both sides of the river. Just a few kilometers from Colombo and so very green. How wonderful. Join me next week for the fifth installment of Detour. Get the Daily News app free on your mobile phone. Visit apps.lakehouse.lk and download today. Daily News. Be better informed.